I'm here on the Mormon Islands, located along the American River near Folsom. These are some old house remains from 1883. Can you believe this used to be an old ghost town? Right behind me is an old bridge, but fascinating one. It has a lot of history to it. You can see it once the lake levels drop. This is the Salmon Falls Bridge. Why is this bridge here? How could a town be here underwater? Who used to live in these houses? In order to find more information about this town, I found Kevin Knaus, who is an author and researcher of the area. Thank you for your time here with us today. Thank you for inviting me. I was hiking with my mom along the shores of Folsom Lake, Mormon Island, and Salmon Falls trails, and we came across an old stone bridge across the river. It was amazing and so beautiful to look at. So I climbed all over it. Then it got me thinking, why is an old bridge here? I also noticed an old abandoned house foundations or bricks. I started to do research on the area and came across the book you wrote, Hidden History Beneath Folsom Lake. In fourth grade, I learned all about the California Gold Rush. So I know there were small gatherings of people all over Folsom. But was there a town in this location before the gold rush? Or did this town occur because of the gold rush? If so, did the town have a name? There were probably, in terms of European people, there were some pioneers and, and people before 1848 that traveled through that area. But really, the area was populated by Native Americans. Um, as you know, that's kind of a nice spot. It's kind of a wide spot by the river. So it would have been a good place for Native Americans to uh, congregate, especially during the summer. And of course, Salmon Falls was where the salmon jumped over the waterfall. So what a great place to catch wow. dinner. Do you know how many people used to live there? It's, um, I've heard rumors of upwards of 3,000 people. The old stones look like house foundations. There are a few spots scattered all over the area with these bricks. Were those the remains of houses from the town you're talking about? Yeah, there were t there were houses, there was a butcher shop, there was a livery stable, there was a oh. little community there um, that was, you know, more or less thriving. After the gold rush, you kind of ended, but most of the gold was all kind of scoured up by the 18, mid-1850s. So it was just a small community, but it did have that road that went through it. And of course, the bridge. And so there was some travelers that would stop there from time to time. And that kind of kept Salmon Falls going. When they started to build the Folsom Dam, the area had to be evacuated because they were going to stop the flow of water and the Folsom Lake would fill up. Were there people living in the town when they were asked to leave? Oh, yes, yes, there were still people there. The Army Corps of Engineers or the it was the government agency that actually designed and built Folsom Dam in the reservoir. And they went through and they had to buy the property from all the people. Um, but even more significantly, they had to disinter the people in the cemeteries. And if you go over to the Mormon Island Relocation Cemetery, I believe it's on Shadowfax, right uh, very close to Folsom, you will see some of the headstones that say relocated from Salmon Falls Cemetery. I can't thank you enough for your time today, Mr. Knaus. Thank you again for your time. After talking to Kevin Knaus, I continued to research the area. I was interested in the Salmon Falls town that used to reside here. After even more research, it took some time, but I found what I was looking for a living resident of the area before the town filled up with water. This is Myrna Brown. I'm accompanied here today by Myrna Brown. Thank you for your time here today, Myrna. You're welcome. I have a few questions here. So was a town called Salmon Falls Town or Mormon Island Town? Well, those were two different places that were settlements. And during when gold mining, you know, gold was first discovered and mining settlements um, were there. But by the time I lived there, those towns were pretty much gone. There were some falls. It got, Salmon Falls got its name because there were 
some falls there and the salmon would come up the American River, but they couldn't get up those falls because they were too high. So the people who lived there, the community, took dynamite and they they made the falls. Um, so there were like four stair steps instead of one big falls and the salmon could get up and so they could get up and go further up the river. Little community was called Salmon Falls and um, the bridge was Salmon Falls after the Salmon Falls. <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about your family? Well, I had a mom and dad and two older brothers. From the first grade to the fifth grade, I went to a little school up near Salmon Falls called uh, Live Oak School. It was a little one room schoolhouse. And um, there were just a few kids there in the fifth grade. It, there were only four of us going to that school. And um, we lived our place out on, uh, do you know where Brown's Ravine is out there by the lake? Well, we lived under the lake where the lake is now. Our place was uh, filled up with water and we had about 250 acres out there. And my dad had a dairy and, um, and we were about a quarter of a mile from the river. So we spent a lot of time on the American River in the summer. When the Folsom Dam was built, I assume you were told you had to leave your house. How many months did you have before the water filled the valley? We we had years. Um, they came, I was really little, I was probably about eight when I heard my parents talking about the government coming to um, buy the property to make a dam and um, but they started building the dam. We were there from like 1948 to 1951. So about three years we stayed while they were actually doing the construction of the dam. And, um, and then after the, we, we left some of our cows out there. We asked if it was okay uh, that they just stayed out there and grazed until we could sell them all. And they said yes. So finally, I think in 1952, we actually moved into Folsom and they started, uh, the water started filling up. And it took a couple of years for that whole big lake to be full. What was the general feeling of your family and neighbors when you were told you had to leave? Well, people were pretty sad. Um, there were some families out there there was a Hoxie family and a Medi family who had lived there. Their parents had lived there before them and they, they fought it. They, they tried to, but my parents uh, being farmers, they knew that the dam was being put in for flood control because the river would flood downstream. It would flump, flood all the farmers downstream. Even in Sacramento, the streets would flood. So they, they felt like it was a good reason to build a dam. So it, but it was still sad. It was sad to leave our place and, um, but we did. Thank you for answering all of our questions here today. You're so welcome. I had an amazing time working with author Kevin Knaus, learning about the area and to be able to talk to Myrna Brown, an actual resident who lived in the Salmon Falls town. I can't imagine knowing I had to leave my house because it would be flooded by water. These remains of the Salmon Falls town is a gold mine of history. I plan to continue to research about the Salmon Falls town and bridge. Maybe someday my town will have history that will be researched.